I get asked all the time, uh, what sort of joystick do I use and uh, what sort of yoke do I use for your flight to me? And pretty much I get the same response back every single time I let people know and that's, I would never spend uh, that much money on a yoke or a joystick for flight to me or any other game. So this got me to think, what do you actually need flight control wise for flight simulations? If you're new to the hobby uh, or you're on a budget, what is actually out there? So in this video, we went on the hunt to find the cheapest joystick under hundred bucks that ticks off all the minimum requirements you need to have a, a great uh, simulation experience when it comes to flight simulation. Hi guys, Shane here, Oz White Simmer. Welcome to your ultimate guide to find the best, cheapest joystick when it comes to uh, flight simulations. We went on the hunt and we searched for the cheapest, the best, the joystick for under $100 um, that ticks off all the minimum features that we think we need to get a great experience and the same result kept coming up, which was the Logitech 3D Pro. So we hit the buy button and four days later it turns up, which is really, really, really good because flight simulation gear, depending on what you're looking for, is hard to get. This one is not. So with a quick unboxing, we were ready to go. And here it is. And first impressions, it actually feels a lot heavier than what I was thinking and quite sturdy, so. So there's four things that you need, in my opinion, that is a bare minimum to give you the best experience when it comes to flight simulations in a joystick. One is a hat switch. Hat switch needs to be on there so it's nice and easy so you can pan around the cockpit and get those amazing views which is in nice reach so you don't have to reach to a keyboard. The other one is a plenty of buttons. You want to have heaps of buttons so you can bind all your flight controls like gears, um, flaps up, flaps down, all that sort of stuff, rudder controls, all, so you've got need to have plenty of buttons. The other one is a twist. So you need to have some sort of rudder control, which is obviously on a joystick, most of the time it's gonna be a twist on the joystick. Um, you need to be able to control your rudders, um, especially when you're landing and when you're taking off. And the other one is a, a throttle control, some sort of throttle control on there, so you can obviously throttle up and throttle down when you need to. So all those sorts of things that need to be in the one spot when it comes to a joystick. The newest flight simulator on the market is a Microsoft Flight Simulator. So of course we are going to check how the Logitech 3D Pro works on a Microsoft Flight Simulator and how easy was it to set up. So here we are in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now I haven't done anything with this joystick other than just plugging it in via the USB. I haven't downloaded any software or anything um, straight in the sim. Microsoft Flight Simulator is picking it up so you can see the Logitech Extreme 3D there. And by the looks of it, um, everything is mapped to the joystick already. Ready. So for this um, video, we're going to use the default mapping, but obviously you can go and change things. So first thing I'm looking for, the hat switch is all um, bound. We can see some of the access is there, up, down, left and right, and using the rudder. So that's all there, which is nice and cool. All the different buttons for our flaps and so forth. And if I scroll down more probably got other buttons for spoilers and things like that so so the buttons that I'm gonna be using for the flight really is uh, flaps up flaps down I believe this is the parking brake obviously we're gonna use the throttle uh, this one here I believe is a brake and that one there is um, gear up and, and down so we're gonna jump in the sim we're gonna try a Cessna 152 on that landing and takeoff and then we'll uh, do something a little bit more challenging Okay, so here we are at Megsfield, the old Megsfield. Um, we've got the throttles, we're sitting at um, a little bit higher RPM there, but we're going to release the brakes and we're going to take off. We've got one notch of flaps in and we'll see how, how it goes. That should be my parking brake. I'm going to need two hands to do the throttle. You guys probably won't see it with the camera view. There we go, but we're full throttle. And I haven't changed any settings for the sensitivity, um, but there we go. 
and you can steady the, the rudder. It's actually quite sensitive. I'm actually quite surprised there's 60 knots. It looks like we've got a bit of a crosswind. Wow. That's actually, I think this is only 8 bits in accuracy for the um, joystick itself, but I was actually quite surprised how accurate that is. Wow. As a takeoff, we'll come back and um, we'll do the landing. I think the biggest surprise, the, the throttle is, feels a little bit sort of loose. It could have a bit more pressure there, um, but I'm really surprised about the accuracy of the joystick. There we go. So we're sort of approaching 65. And we're using our rudders there, so I'm using the twist a little bit. Like I said, I haven't played around with the settings um, for the sensitivity yet. We'll see if we can. Got a bit of a crosswind. even too. Oh, that's a fair bit of a crosswind there. So that was actually quite a challenging landing for the 152. There's quite a crosswind here down at Meg's Fields today, but um, worked quite well. So we used the brake there to put the brake on. Very interesting. Um, quite comfortable to use, and the only thing is the throttle seems a bit loose, but I think there's a screw in there. You could probably actually tighten that up, but um, that was quite an enjoyable flight using um, a joystick at, at this price range for that sort of stuff. So let's try something a little bit more challenging. So this time we are doing a windier landing challenge, which is actually a new Wellick. Um, we're going to land at this uh, runway strip, uh, very short with a massive crosswind. So you need to use a lot of joystick input. So we'll give the um, 3D Pro a run for its money. I'm going to drop as much flaps as we can. Could get in here as slow as possible. So you need to be very accurate and very accurate on the rudder on the turn or else you'll drop the wing into the ground. Some sink over the trees there and then we've got to drop it down. There we go. We don't stall the wing. So not my best one, but as you can see, I really had to use the rudder there. And the 3D Pro, it, it did it fine. It really had great control over the SNESA um, during that, that windy landing challenge. So it wasn't too bad. The Logitech Extreme 3D Pro is a great joystick. Not only for flight simulations, you'd be able to use this in other types of flying simulated games. A couple of that come to mind would be Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. It would be great for that. It's not only just for GA aircraft, I know that's what we demonstrated today, but you can use it in jets such as the Air Mackie here, as we do a quick snap barrel roll, and also such as the big airliners too, as the A320s and possibly the CRJ when it, that comes out. Um, in the not too distant future. So for under $100 AUD or even under $80 AUD and you can even get it at some times of the year cheaper than that, it's pretty good. It ticks off four of my uh, minimum um, requirements when it comes to joystick. That is a hat switch, lots of buttons to bind all your controls to and also uh, rudder controls and a throttle. So it pretty, it's pretty good in my aspect. So for, for that sort of price limit, it's a very good um, joystick for a first timer or someone that's on a budget um, when it comes to flight simulations. If you're new to the hobby or you're on a budget or even you just want to dip your toe in the water and see what it's all about, the Logitech um, Extreme 3D Pro I think is a great product for that. It ticks off my four things, minimum basics that are features that a yoke or a joystick should have. And when it comes to 100, under $100 AUD, or even $80 AUD, sometimes you can find it on sale for a lot cheaper than that. I think it's good, worth good value for money. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check it out. And also take a look while you're there of other hardware recommendations um, that I use and I think it would be worthwhile. 
Thanks very much for watching. There's gonna be a lot more hardware videos coming out in the near future. So if you like this sort of stuff, please let us know in the comments below. Hit that like button so we know that you're enjoying the content. And if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you've seen, welcome. Hit that subscribe button so you know when our next video is going to be out. I'm gonna leave you with another um, hardware video. Just, I think it's gonna be over this side over here. Um, it's a bit of a preview. And also a video just over here as well if you wanna check out um, what's happening the latest when it comes to the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So thank you very much for watching. I'll check you out on or see you on one of these videos. See ya.